Morgan. One of our members asked if I could talk a little bit uh, about the Essenes. She was uh, very interested in the Essenes and how their movement relates to Christianity. So to properly understand the Essenes we have to look at it in, from a historical perspective. So the Essenes were one out of three groups within Judaism at uh, the time of the activities of Jesus Christ. The other two groups being the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And the distinctions we see between these three groups they are not just a distinction which existed in those historical times, they are a distinction which exists I think through all time. So let's start with a more known group, the Pharisees. So the Pharisees were a very popular movement. So large parts of the uh, population um, ascribed to the Pharisee philosophy. Uh, the Pharisee philosophy was basically that religious law and um, you could say political uh, uh, law, uh, secular law should be one. There should be one law and it should be a religious law which governs all things. They also favoured a very um, strict and rigid inflexible interpretation of that law. The law should be very simple, it should be such that everybody can know it, everybody can understand it and it should apply um, to everybody and to every situation. So very much a one-size-fits-all attitude. If we compare it to our modern situation, we could see such a, a movement in uh, Christian or Islamic or Hindu fundamentalism. So they believe that it is best to go back to the oldest roots, that the law is unchanging and that laws cover everything. And ultimately such a law would lead to a uh, homogeneous, but also a little bit, yeah, you could say stagnant or uh, conservative society. Then you have, you could say, the um, persons who are more flexible about laws and seek to reinterpret the principles. These are the Sadducees. So the Sadducees of that time um, favoured um, to build upon the tradition which has been laid by various generations of priests and high priests and priestesses. So basically they saw it as the religion as something which is growing, which is moving through the centuries and the principles of which are being reinvented and reapplied as society itself changes. At that time the, uh, Judea was a part of the Roman Empire and there was a process going on of Romanization and Hellenization. And this reflected in, in the attitude of the Sadducees that these new principles, these new insights which were coming along with Romanization um, should also be applied to their own situation. So they favoured a situation in which um, the society was learning and also religion was learning to incorporate new insights, new philosophies which their culture encountered. And you could say that the uh, Sadducees are more like the um, people who favour uh, innovation, who favour adaptation, who welcome new impulses and wish to renew, innovate uh, the religion and society. And finally we have the Essenes. So the Essenes are very much known for their asceticism, for in a way withdrawing from uh, society. Um, this withdrawing is of course on the one hand on a physical level 
by leaving the community, living outside the mainstream community and forming their own communities, um, living in the desert and close to the Dead Sea in this case. But it's also a leaving community in other ways. So it is by accepting a vow of uh, voluntary poverty, uh, by becoming celibate, by living an ascetic lifestyle. So the very things which drive society, like having relationships, uh, love, family, um, careers, jobs, they leave all of it behind. And they focus on doing good works. So they want to be involved and inspired only by um, divine law and actually not at all be integrated into secular law. So we see this attitude also throughout the ages where hermits, uh, holy men, uh, holy women, prophets, uh, shamans, um, bards, druids have also separated themselves from society to remain pure. And also in shamanic society, the shaman is in a way outside of society so that they can remain neutral, um, that they are not polluted, you could say, by the lower vibrations, by the politics of society, and that their power is in a way used for the benefit of all humans rather than becoming a political tool in the hands of one or the other um, secular movement. So they, in a way, favor a very strict separation between church and state, rather than joining the church and the state like the people who are innovative or fundamentalist would favor. These three movements also have a very different, yeah, you could say, um, group of people who are in favor of it. So we discussed already that the common people favored the Pharisees and the Pharisaic interpretation of, uh, of law. Um, it was usually more the elite and the intellectual elite. Um, so both the rich, the well-educated and also the people who had a tradition of uh, serving the uh, God were very much interested in the Sadducee form of uh, uh, Judaism. Um, well, the Essenes consisted very much of, you could say, yeah, people who felt outsiders, outcasts. So if we would translate that to modern day society, you have the fundamentalists, um, people who are in favor of, yeah, relatively rigid a conservative society uh, opposing new influences, opposing outside influences and um, everything to be relatively simple, relatively stable. Uh, then you have the more open-minded, scientifically minded, uh, philosophically minded um, intellectual elite. And finally you have the people who reject the whole principle completely of um, trying to integrate the two. So these would be the, um, the squatters, uh, um, you could say the, the, uh, the people who enjoy punk music, uh, heavy metal, the hippies. Um, we're past the, you could say the flower power age, but there's now also the new age movement. Uh, the rainbow gathering people, so people who want to um, live in a way which is inspired by higher powers but don't want to continue living or being dominated by the dominant culture. So this division in trees is in a way not a thing only of the ancient times around the birth of Christ, but it has continued on into our modern society. If you look at the specific interest in their scenes and the, you could say, the, the claims that Jesus was an Essene, um, we find that the Essenes had um, gathered a great number of religious books and 
that they they maintained religious libraries with probably the Dead Sea Scrolls being the biggest example or the proof of that uh, idea. Um, we also see that the Dead Sea Scrolls are yeah, one repository of ancient uh, knowledge and really Christianity, while of course the Nag Hammadi Scrolls are of a later date, probably 3rd century, which show a lot of the influences with and different uh, views there existed upon Christianity in the 3rd century before all those books became uh, banned and um, those writings became much more um, canonized by the Roman Emperor. So if we look at the interpretation which was uh, yeah, put forward by the Essenes they were very much about um, a life of simplicity, um, a life of sacrifice. And we do see that reflected in the yeah, lessons Jesus teaches us. So he is not in favor of uh, money changers living in a temple. He believes that the temple is, should not be a place of power, of commerce, of money. He thinks it should be devoted to God and God alone. So he's very much in favor of, you could say, a separation between uh, church and state. If you look at it also from the um, legal perspective, he breaks the laws of the Pharisees of yeah, being active on the Sabbath, something for which the Pharisees yeah, blame him and they try to have him um, uh, persecuted because of it. So he doesn't believe in a very strict application of the divine law. He rather favors being inspired and following this divine inspiration rather than the letter of the law. So he's more a person who's interested in serving the spirit. So he is, even though uh, he's very interested in spirituality, he cannot be considered a Pharisee or in modern terms a fundamentalist. He's rather a renewer, a person who's trying to uh, renew the tradition or follow a higher impulse rather than a traditionalist. So it is rather interesting that even though he himself was a rebel and favoring new interpretations, uh, applying new principles, that later Christianity became a very great um, conservative force trying to repress new ideas and trying to in a way uh, become more like the, the Pharisees where they favored an interpretation where church law and um, secular law in a way became very much one where um, in a way, opposing the, uh, the king or the noble would be the same as opposing the uh, God and the divine order. So you could say that original Christianity was more along the lines of the Sadducees and the Essenes than it was Pharisaic. And this is a movement we always see, that a person is a, is a leader uh, because they do something new, because they create a new movement. Uh, within the existing structure. So Buddha was a rebel, a revolutionary. Uh, Jesus was a rebel and a revolutionary. And after them also Muhammad was a rebel and revolutionary. And all three of these um, historical figures are also, yeah, have their trials uh, put before them because they are revolutionary, because they are trying to change the existing system and to Try to improve it to create a better one. So they're more along the lines of the Sadducees and their scenes. So then we have the second difference. So it was not a Pharisee, but then you have the Sadducee and their scene. So the Sadducee is very much in favor of um, an integrated view um, of in a way the society as a whole 
um, being an embodiment both of philosophy as well as of religion and as scenes which in a way separate the two. If we look at this example we find that Jesus for instance when asked about taxation basically doesn't want to get involved in it so when he's asked about taxation like he just replies whose face is that you see on the coin okay it's the emperor's face well it's the emperor's gain it's the emperor's money if he wants to give it to us okay well here we have it if he wants to have it back let him take it back so he doesn't want to get involved in this whole you could say um, game about money about career about power uh, into politics so that would put him more into the camp of the uh, of the Essenes. The Essenes however are basically more interested in continuing a tradition following a very old route you could say and um, following the most pure vein um, this is also why they are ascetic, because they consider everything else in a way to be a distraction. So they are in their own way not as innovative as the uh, Sadducees. They are more interested in, um, in a way reinventing or going back to the core teachings. And we see this also very strongly in, um, in Buddhism where in a way also the, the writings are reanalyzed every generation and rewritten every generation because they believe that the core values are eternal but our interpretation of the core values is of course flawed and seen through the lens of our times, our culture, our current civilization and we need to find again and reinterpret the core values again and again so that we have a very living and uh, practical religion. We don't find this yeah, Sadduceic uh, renewal as strongly with the Essenes as we find it with the Sadducees and we could certainly see that Christ was very much a person who favored uh, so a renewal of the tradition of um, going both to the to the essence of it and then reinterpreting it for his modern day disciples, his modern day society. So there was also a very strong Sadducee uh, um, side to uh, to his philosophy. If you look at his lifestyle, though, his lifestyle is very much an ascetic lifestyle, in that he's not interested in uh, continuing working within the system like the disciples have to in a way, give up their jobs and uh, choose to follow him um, as to the uh, very strict asceticism which is ascribed to the Essenes of in a way denying themselves of luxuries of all outwardly distractions uh, we don't see this at all. We don't see that he is uh, rejecting uh, possession, that he is rejecting physical intimacy. He exchanges kisses, um, they share meals, they drink wine. So that goes against, in a way, the view that he was uh, an extreme ascetic, like, for instance, Buddha was. So my personal idea is that he was not ascribing to uh, belong to the Sadducees or the Essenes very much and more that he was trying to do his own thing um, that would put him more in the yeah, vein of the Essenes than that of the, of the Sadducees. If you look at his teachings by itself um, because Jesus is often presented as in a way the, the sole source of this renewal of these teachings and this is in a way incorrect. Um, Jesus was a proponent of, yeah, you could say a new way of, um, of working with things um, and much of modern Christianity 
is an adaptation of the Mitras cult and came from pagan roots which were absorbed into Christianity. So Christianity uh, basically um, followed a very dualistic uh, approach of, in a way, um, absorbing uh, existing uh, pagan cultures and making them part of itself and, in a way, rejecting other parts. And we see the same, in a way, within, uh, within Judaism, where much of the, uh, to them, pagan uh, religions of the people around them and even pagan beliefs among their own people are rejected and they become seen as something evil, demonic, satanic, um, diabolical. Well, yeah, other powers are in a way absorbed into it and um, other yeah, spirits are seen as spirits of God, as angels, as saints. So the same um, structure we see existing between Judaism, which in a way um, creates a very strong Zoroastrian divide between light and darkness. We see also back um, in Christianity. But if we look at Jesus himself, we see a very different picture emerging. Um, he is very unwilling to judge. He is very unwilling to be so dualistic and to call the Romans evil and to judge a woman for her sins. Rather, he is very much about going beyond differences, about seeing that the divine is in a way the source and also the goal of each and every being. So you could say that he is in that much more of an, yeah, of an Essene than uh, a political person who is trying to use religion to you know, prop up and um, control society in that way. So he doesn't believe in uh, political um, Christianity or he would probably also not propose uh, political Islam or political Hinduism or politicization of, of religion in that way. So it's more of an Essene which who believes that in a way the divine is in a way its own guidance, it's the highest form of guidance and it should be followed regardless of the pressures which are placed upon one from society. So in modern day society it would be more similar to a squatter, a hippie, um, a hard rocker, um, a rainbow gathering person, a new age kind of uh, person. And it's of course quite funny that um, all leaders who create great new movements um, ultimately become, instead of revolutionaries, a part of the system of the very conservative order they themselves rebelled and fought against. So if you're looking for the original Christianity, it is not the yeah, conservative form of Christianity we have today, but it is rather more revolutionized. Uh, spirituality that he was proposing at that time. And there we come to a very yeah, problematic thing, like should we in a way follow the wave of revolution always, or should we hang on to what is good and proper and created by these great spiritual teachers, by these great spiritual masters? And this is a difficult question to answer. For me personally, um, I believe that the impulse should be reinterpreted. So my belief is very similar um, to that of the, yeah, the Sadducees and the Essenes, believing that there is a divine impulse and that divine impulse should be in applied to life. I don't. Um, hold to the view of the Essenes that we should withdraw from society, let society do its own thing, and we will do our thing. Um, because I do feel that it is in a way our, our duty to 
um, use these higher impulses we receive to also transform society, not just to do our own thing and to transform ourselves, but to try to um, use these impulses as a blessing for the whole of society. And it is of course easier and more pure to separate yourself. I'm not against separating our, yourself, but I am opposed to a more rigid interpretation. Because our spirits are evolving, our society is evolving. And I believe that if you are talking about evil or opposing forces or forces keeping us from our spiritual evolution, I do believe that the enemy of spiritual evolution is found in materialism, secularism, and but also in fundamentalism. Because our spirit is evolving and we have to evolve with it. And we're all on different steps in our own spiritual evolution. And some people might need a very simple interpretation, uh, something they can grasp, something which is practical for them to make a step forward. So I can understand that some people are favoring fundamentalism and the fundamentalist um, very conservative approach. And also conservatives have a very important role. They preserve traditions. They preserve also the roots of traditions so that other people can in a way find back these roots that those writings, those traditions, those um, folkloristic roots do not get lost in time. But um, conservatism is more than run religious fundamentalism. It's also preserving the knowledge and wisdom of your people, like the knowledge which is past in folklore, in bloodlines, in fairy tales, in sagas, in legends, in architecture. So a proper conservative doesn't just choose like, okay, this very narrow view which I have is purity, is the solution, is the only way. Because if there was only one way